Today we're going to disassemble an HTC One X for screen replacement and we will begin by removing the SIM card tray from the top of the phone. You will need a SIM card ejector or a very small paper clip to get this out. And once you do that, what we're going to have to do is pop some clips along the side rails here next to the glass and then we're going to have four pieces down at the bottom that kind of wedge in underneath the outer shell of the phone so it's a little difficult to explain but what we want to do is go between this white frame and the actual assembly that goes on the inside which contains uh, pretty much everything inside of the phone and I don't really like to use a metal tool anywhere near glass especially when it's already broken but in this case it's a very tight fit so um, if you aren't real careful if your glass isn't already broken it probably will be by the time you get done unless you're extremely careful so uh, this is just a real tricky one to open up that's pretty much the hardest part about this phone that and uh, getting all the junk off from the inside so you see I'm working around the edges here with a very thin nylon pry tool and you can these are so flexible you can actually kind of go around the corners and either roll it a little bit or just slide it down very carefully what you want to do of course is be careful when you're um, prying anywhere near the charging port or the volume buttons on the sides up closer to the top end and what I've done here is I'm kind of opening it up a little bit and just progressively working to a slightly stronger pry tool so that we'll have a little more leverage down here at the bottom because this thing is really clipped in tight so again what we're doing is we're gonna go along the side and push outward away from the glass um, kind of to the left and the right if you were looking at the phone upright and that's going to pop the clips off from the outer edge that are holding that part in. And then down here at the bottom, we really have to pry. So I think there's uh, three or four tabs that you've got to get underneath here. And try not to go under the glass. You want to get underneath the entire housing. There's no real easy way to explain this. Once it's apart, though, hopefully it'll be more evident as to what we're trying to accomplish here. And you will see that it starts to come out a little bit at a time. And uh, again, just have to work your way all the way up and down the sides and make sure all those clips are released. Otherwise, it's not going to come out. And it does wedge in from the front like a lot of the newer HTCs. So we've just got to get this bottom piece released. And then you can kind of lift it up and slide out just like this. And now we're working with the rest of the phone, which includes the battery, the logic board camera, and uh, pretty much everything else other than that outer piece. So what I'm going to do here is start by just kind of lifting the battery up. If you have to, you might have to use a little bit of heat here. Be very careful when you're prying. The terminals are where my left forefinger are right now. So you just want to very gently kind of lift this up, and you can leave the battery connected. I haven't had experienced any problems with leaving it attached. If you want to, on the other side of the board, there's a place where you can actually um, unplug the battery, but we're not going to worry about that today. It's just kind of a headache the way that uh, HTC puts these things together with a bunch of gummy tape that holds the flex cables and the battery terminals in place. So those wires have enough flexibility that you can open this up and expose the inner flex cables. And over here, we should have, um, basically we need to remove these five screws at the top. There's one in the center, two on the top and bottom here from what you're looking at. One has a warranty sticker up there. And these are all slot, uh, excuse me, Phillips screws. You will find that the some of them do tend to get stuck inside of the housing, so you might have to get a pair of tweezers to pull them out. And again, this little plastic clip at the top is a little hard to explain. It has some pieces that kind of lock around the board, so you'll see here how I uh, approach this as far as removing it. It's not very difficult. It's just a little uh, different because they've got clips pointing in different in opposite directions, which is unusual, but it works. So once we've got the uh, five screws loosened here, you'll have to kind of go underneath this a little bit at the top. There's a clip that goes around the outside, and then there's an opposing one, if I remember correctly, that actually goes around the inside. But if you just kind of wiggle this around a little bit and work with it, you'll see that it will eventually release as long as you have those five screws removed. Just take your time and be careful and get a close look at what you're working on. And that should pop right out. And again, you'll see... Uh, there's not uh, too much to this phone. If you can get a good look there, you'll see where the clips are that I'm talking about at the top. Uh, if not, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. It's pretty uh, apparent. So we have our main flex cable here for the LCD at the top. And then we'll have our digitizer flex here down at the bottom. It has a real awkward positioning. It's just the opposite of what you'd think it'd be. And you'll see here when we get a little bit further how we have to get that uh, plug back in when we finish. So go ahead and release this pop connector here at the top. 
and then if you pull the battery up there are a couple screws on the bottom side of the logic board here which would be on our right hand side they're actually a, it's actually a separate piece completely that we'll have to remove and we do have an antenna wire plugged in also down there that we'll want to disconnect So go ahead and remove this cap, captain or capton tape, however you care to pronounce it. These will hold the connectors closed so that they don't open up later on. And I like to just kind of set those aside somewhere uh, where I'm going to see them as I'm assembling the phone. We don't want to forget to put those back on. So I'm going to put that right next to where it plugs in. And now we can just kind of gently open this gate and that flex cable will slide out of the connector. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and loosen these screws down here at the bottom, uh, actually remove them. And be very careful, you might find some adhesive under these. This one didn't have any. Sometimes they do stick them in there and you can see that kind of unplugs and just work your way out. Again, don't forget we do need to disconnect the antenna cable. And I will be writing some articles on this, so if you need more information, go to gocellphonerepair.com forward slash 1x, and I'll put up any additional notes that I have in the future that will hopefully make this repair easier for you. So now we can take this bottom section here. I believe. Oh, there's actually a pop connector underneath that little L-shaped bracket on the board. Uh, if you can see, I just believe I just disconnected that one. And then the board itself actually has a couple of things you want to watch out for. You want to make sure that you release the power button from the frame. Uh, before you start prying here, I got ahead of myself a little bit. Uh, but there is adhesive under there, but also the power button itself is stuck to the housing. So you want to make sure you get that disconnected and also the volume cables. If you don't and you pull the board out, you are going to tear those cables. So make sure you very carefully get under here, get underneath the whole thing. Don't split it in half. That's a problem that a lot of people run into. We want to release that completely so that it's free to move. And then over here on the side, uh, we will also have our volume buttons, which I'll get to any moment. Here we go. So make sure you also get under this cable very carefully. You might have to apply some heat to loosen the adhesive a little bit. But you can actually disconnect this cable from the board or you can pull just uh, unstick it and I prefer to do it this way. Once we do that, there'll just be some minor adhesive holding the board in place and when you pull that off, finally, you can actually get underneath here and, and release this gummy adhesive junk that they have that actually goes over an additional flex cable on the back side of the logic board. And then we can kind of just peel this stuff off. I, I would switch this to a different type of tape. This stuff's just a nightmare to work with. Um, but once you get it unstuck, you can go ahead and release the gate here and that will slide out. And now we have our entire logic board with the battery still connected. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our replacement part, and before we install it completely, we're going to go ahead and test this out and make sure we have an LCD that lights up and touchscreen functionality. This is the most awkward part of the job. What we have to do is get this cable plugged in, and it's a uh, kind of counterintuitive, but if you missed uh, the way it was set up from the inside, take a look here. The shiny side or the gold connectors need to be facing towards the logic board, but it plugs in from the inside, not from the outer side. So you'll find this to be a lot easier if you flip the battery over and get it out of the way. And then once we get that connected, we can kind of turn the whole board over, lay it on top of the LCD very carefully. And then you'll see that the top pop connector here is going to fold down and then over from outside. And once we do that, we should be able to, uh, and be really careful here, you don't want to force these things if they don't feel like they're going in. Just check your alignment, make sure everything's straight. And once you line it up correctly, you shouldn't have to apply very much pressure to, to connect these. And if you do, in the wrong position, you can actually damage them. So once we get that together, we'll flip it over, and then you'll have to grab your power button here and kind of squeeze it right in the center of that little gold circle. And you can always use a tool to do this. Unfortunately, this particular phone has a dead battery, so I'm going to cut to another frame here in a minute. I actually had to go ahead and plug it in for a little bit so I can get power. 
So you can see I'm holding the power button there, nothing's happening yet. That's because the battery's dead. It's been sitting on the shelf for a while. So I went ahead and plugged this in. You can see it's charging there at the top. There's the charging light indicator or indicator light. And now we're going to once again, press on the power button for a couple seconds. And as soon as you hear the buzz from the vibrator, you'll know that it's turning on and we can see that we have a good LCD. We, you see I can slide the ring completely across the screen. Unfortunately, this phone has a passcode on it, so I can't test all of the areas on the touch screen, but it looks like most of it seems to be functioning, at least what I can access right now. So we're gonna go ahead and power this down and then we can put it all together. So once you've uh, taken the LCD off once again, what we're going to do is work with uh, a lot of adhesive that sticks this metal frame on the inside to the mid frame of the phone. And I'm gonna put some tape on the outside here just to kinda of keep from making any more of a mess than I already have. When you start prying on this, glass is gonna go everywhere. This will kinda of minimize that somewhat and hopefully hold most of it together. Now, because we're replacing the screen, we're not too worried about cutting these flex cables. If you wanted to try to salvage this LCD, you would uh, probably be a lot more careful than I am with this one. But because of the low cost of the replacement unit, I do recommend that you buy the whole thing rather than just trying to do the glass. It, it would be a lot of extra work to save a few dollars, really. And we're going to apply quite a bit of heat here. Get this thing warmed up. Uh, once, you, once it's opened up, you'll see that on the sides of the phone, there are two strips of adhesive they are probably a good three quarters of an inch wide or so and that's the majority of what holds this thing together and the tricky part here is not damaging the plastic frame that goes up around the sides of the glass so be very careful while you're prying later on in the video you'll probably notice this one you can see there it's actually cracked already i think that's where um, something went wrong before whether it was from the impact or something else So I'm working in here again with a very thin nylon pry tool and I'm trying to get underneath the entire assembly, not just the glass. Uh, at this point, I'm actually breaking the adhesive just around the edges of the glass. The nice thing about the nylon pry tools is they're relatively flexible, so you won't have to put a lot of stress on that outer plastic rim while you can still get a little bit of pressure underneath the glass to try to get it separated. And once we have a little bit of an opening there, you can go in with a stronger pry tool. And again, try to get underneath the entire assembly. You don't want to really pry directly on the glass if you can avoid it. So now you can see I actually did get the majority of it off, but it looks like the metal frame is still stuck on the inside. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and heat this up and pretty much tear the whole front off with the exception of that last piece. Because it did kind of split, that will happen on occasion. And another good reason to just buy the whole thing, because when you do try to salvage the glass on these, most of the time you'll end up breaking the LCD. So we'll heat this up a little more and we should be able to get underneath the metal frame that goes behind the LCD. Again, you can start with a very thin tool, uh, but the main thing is eventually you're going to need a little bit of strength behind it, so you will have to move up to something a little heavier.
And you can see I'm almost actually making a kind of a cutting motion there on the side just to get this started. So there's a big strip of adhesive there. And once you can kind of get your tool in there, just use a twisting motion. That should separate this a little bit at a time. And we'll try to get as much of the adhesive out as we can. And you can see just very slowly there it's starting to come apart. By the way, on the left-hand side where the lens is, you'll see that there are three little plastic tabs that go over the bottom row buttons for the screen. Make sure that your replacement part has those tabs. If it does not, you will have to salvage the old ones and put them into the phone. If you don't, the buttons on the bottom of your screen will not light up properly. Now once we've got that pulled out, what we're going to have to do is go underneath this bottom flex cable here just in the corner. I'd recommend you use some heat. You want to be really careful with uh, this piece itself is actually about 30 bucks last time I looked. So we're just going to pull that up from the edge far enough so that we can slide the flex cable out. From there, you can just kind of peel that flap back a little bit and then work this through. Very carefully. And mine got stuck on a bunch of gummy stuff there at the end, so I had to pull that off. But again, don't force anything. You want to make sure you don't rip any of the cables that you're going to be using again. And there we have it. From here, what we're going to do is prepare this surface for new adhesive to reinstall the lens. I will have a follow-up video for reassembly coming up shortly. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. Feel free to share this with your friends, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter.